Okay, another sample problem. This one's kind of a fun one because it has to do with actual lab experimentation. Uh, that is the measurement of volume and ultimately density by something called water displacement. So in this type of experiment, what you might do is you go into lab and you get yourself a graduated cylinder. That's that long tube with the base and then the graduation marks along the tube that tell you how many milliliters of volume are approximately contained within the tube. It's used kind of for general purpose estimation of volume in the lab. And what this problem tells us is that initially we fill this graduated cylinder up with 19.9 milliliters of water. That's our initial volume reading of water. And then what we're going to do is we're going to obtain an object. And this object is made out of an ore called galena. And we're going to take this chunk and throw it down into our graduated cylinder. It's pretty dense, so it sinks to the bottom, okay? So we're end up going to have this chunk of galena down here in the bottom. That's going to cause the fluid level to, in the graduated cylinder to rise. After we add the galena, the new volume is 24.5 milliliters, and the fluid level rose because this ore has a volume associated with it. Okay, so we can actually measure the volume of irregularly shaped objects by this method. It's simply called water displacement. The difference between the initial and the final volume reading is simply the volume of the object. Okay, So we're asked here in the first uh, sample problem, what is the volume of this chunk of ore that we put in there? In cubic centimeters, and not only that, but also in liters. Okay, So what do we know? Well, the final volume was 24.5 milliliters. And the initial volume was 19.9 milliliters. So the difference, and for difference here, what I want to write is a triangle vol. Triangle vol. Whenever you see the triangle in the chemistry class here, that's going to denote change in something. So it's read change in volume, triangle volume. You might call it delta volume or delta V. Okay. So my change in volume is just the final volume minus the initial. That's another thing too. Whenever we compute change, we always do final minus initial, final minus initial. So my final value minus my initial, for our purposes in this class, that's always going to show us change in some variable, whether that be volume, temperature, whatever, final minus initial, okay? So uh, hopefully we can do this uh, division, or not division, but uh, subtraction pretty quickly here. In our heads, we've got like units, in other words, they're both milliliters, so it's pretty easy to subtract two numbers with the same unit. And we quickly come to the conclusion that we've got 4.6 milliliters difference. Okay? Now that 4.6 milliliters must correspond to the volume of this chunk of galena that we added into our system. Okay? So we know the volume in milliliters. Notice here, in terms of sig figs, right? this has three, this has three. My answer only has two. Okay, because what's important when you're uh, subtracting or adding numbers is how many decimal sig fig places you've got. Here I've only got one sig fig to the right of the decimal point. Here I've got one, so my answer should only have one. That's the rule for addition or subtraction. So this would be a perfect acceptable answer in terms of sig fig. So 4.6 milliliters is the volume of that chunk of irregularly shaped galena as measured through uh, water displacement. Now we're not quite done because we're asked what's the volume in cubic centimeters and also in liters. We've got to think about this a little bit. Now remember in class the other day I was trying to make the point that one cubic centimeter equals one milliliter? These are essentially the same volumes. Okay? So because I'm 4.6 milliliter, I'm also very confident in saying that this object is 4.6 cubic centimeter, okay? Now, for liters, we're going to have to do a little bit more work, okay? We're going to have to do a, a unit conversion that's a little bit more trouble. But it's still not going to be too terribly difficult for us, I hope. So we start with what we know, the 4.6 milliliters. And we're going to go to liters units, okay? 
So my units are going to be liters. That's my desired unit. I put that in the top of my conversion factor. My undesirable unit, I put down here in the bottom so that they cancel out when I do my mathematics. Now the only thing left is what is the numerical relationship between liters and milliliters? And from my knowledge of the metric prefixes, I know that one liter corresponds to 1,000 milliliters. So I need to divide by 1,000. Take this, divide it by 1,000. And if I do that, it's like moving the decimal place three spots. So I've got 0 0.0046 liters. That's equivalent to 4.6 milliliters. I've got my volume in liters. I've got it in cubic centimeters. Cubic centimeters. I've got it in milliliters. All these are exactly the same volume that is the volume of that chunk of glitter that I put in. Now the second part of this problem then is going to ask me about the density. I actually extended this on myself. I kind of wrote this part of the problem because it turns out that water displacement as a very common method to measure the density of irregularly shaped objects. All you need to do to get the density after this experiment, or really probably before it, okay, you measure the mass of the object. So you measure the mass of the object first, you come back, you measure the volume by water displacement, and of course, and of course density, capital D, is equal to mass divided by volume with the most common units being grams for mass and milliliter for volume. You don't have to use those units. Densities can be measured in other units, but this is the most common that we'll see in this class, okay? So for us to compute the density of the galena, it's not gonna to be too terribly difficult because we were told that when we weighed the object, it had a mass of 34.96 grams and when we measured the volume by water displacement, we were told that that volume was 4.6 milliliters. Okay, so we have the grams, the mass. We also have the volume as 4.6. So let me get my calculator here real fast and break out this calculation. 34.96 divided by 4.6 looks like the answer I get is 7.6 grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. Remember, that's the same. So the density of this object, which is an intrinsic property of Galena, 7.6 grams per milliliter, okay? So another sample problem, you know, showing these unit conversions, types of calculations you got to work in Chapter 1.